reading this morning to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 and then we will look at Genesis 6 verse 5 and 6 as we spend some time, last Sunday I just had, had a great time in, in uh, Jeffersonville for the Mid-Shake program and uh, I picked up from uh, the theme that I started on Father's Day for the men and uh, um, we, we dealt with kind of uh, part two of, of that in Jeffersonville and, and they were blessed by it and God has put it on my heart to continue to, to minister to, to the men, to the brothers and, and women you will be blessed by this too. Uh, in Genesis chapter 1 uh, beginning at verse 26 and when you have found it would you please stand as we honor the reading of of God's word, Amen. This this, this touched me. This verse uh, it, it really spoke to me this week, and I thought about it on my way home last Sunday as we were coming back from from Jeffersonville. Uh, Genesis one, uh, praise God, verse twenty six. Genesis chapter one, verse twenty six, and and it reads this way. Then God said, "Let us make man." in our own image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Yes. Would you then turn with me to Genesis chapter 6? We will look together at verse 5 and 6. Praise God. Genesis 6 verses 5 and 6. And it reads this way. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his divine word and that all the people of God say together, Amen. You may be seated because I would like this, this morning from those two scripture verses to, to teach this morning on the thought, living in the image of God. Brothers, living in the image of God. Living in the image of God. The book of Genesis in Genesis 1, and we have just read that in chapter 1, verse 26, tells us that God created man in his own image and likeness. The word image means to reflect the likeness. Amen. To reflect the likeness. Man was given his intellect like God. Man was given his moral nature like God. Man was given his power to communicate like God. Man was given his emotional nature like God. Man was given his righteousness and true holiness like God. And God placed man on the earth to be the representative of God. Man was to have dominion over the earth in the will of God. It's like when you have a child that looks like you and they are a reflection of you. When, when God created man, when God created us men in his own image, and the Bible said in his own likeness, we were created to be the representatives of God on the earth. When Adam was living in the image of God, he was in the right place with God. Adam 
Adam was spiritually connected to God. Adam was holy. Adam was happy. Adam was blessed. And Adam was fruitful. All of creation on the earth was in harmony with God. The animals were in harmony one with the other. There was no killing. And there was no sickness. There was no trouble. There was no hell. Everything was in harmony on the earth because Adam, who was created in the image of God, was living his life in the image of God. He was the representative of God living in the will of God. And because of that, everything was flowing the way God had ordained it to be. Men. Because we were doing it right with God. Now watch this. The Bible says that when Adam sinned against God, men stopped living in the image of God. Men lost their dominion over the earth. Men rebelled against God. Men were no longer the spiritual leaders of the earth because they had stopped living in the image of God. Men were no longer happy like they were when they were living in the image of God. Men were no longer devoted to God. Men had stopped, stopped fearing God and had stopped serving God. Men no longer had reverence for God as they did in the garden. So the Bible said that God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Men had a special place with God, a reverence with God. Men in large numbers stopped worshiping God. Men started pulling away from God. When men were living in the image of God, men were right with God. But the Bible said it got so bad. It got so bad, men, that by the time you get to Genesis 6, God became so displeased with us brothers because of our wickedness that it grieved God's heart. And God became so sorry that he said, I am sorry that I even made man. The brothers are not going to say amen this morning. So hopefully I get two or three ladies that will say amen, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. As I look at our world today and, and we began to talk about this, this text and, and what's going on in our in our society today, and I, I am so troubled because I, I know what is wrong. I was telling the people in Jeffersonville, I, I am impressed that on Friday when I go down uh, on 30th Street and you go past Cold Spring Road and it is the time of, of prayer and worship for uh, the Muslims and at the mosque, there are so many men that, that diligently every Friday go to prayer, amen, and go to worship that, that you cannot even get through because the crowd is so large. The men, the men are there in, in large numbers and, 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 and they are praying and giving honor to, to their God. But the problem today is when I look at the Christian church, you see the church is, is primarily 60 to 70 percent women, amen. 60 to 70 percent women, the men are, are, are not there. And, and, and I believe just in, like in the days of old when we get to Genesis 6, I believe being that, that we have still today, we are grieving the heart of God because God created us, praise God, to live our lives in the image of God. We were, we were God. When God had made everything else, then he made man and, and then he made woman, brothers, Men today have, have lost their, 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 their connection to God. We, we, we are not living in the image of God. Look at what's going on today, brothers, uh, among us. We, we have created a culture today, men, where, where we have created a lot of women who now hate men because of the way we have treated them. We have created a nation that is full of children who are angry at their fathers. I shared this. I shared a little bit. You can't share too much when you're at home and your family is there. 
But, 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 but when my biological father died, my mother remarried when I was the age of two. My biological father left my mother. They divorced when I was two years old. I did not see my father again until I was 18 years old. When my father died, I went to the funeral. Amen. And I had had a, had, a, had started to develop a relationship with him, but it wasn't a, a, a solid relationship with him. But when I was in the church, the funeral of my father, I started feeling bad. Because my father was laying in front of the church, but I felt nothing. And because I felt nothing for my father, I felt bad about it. Because it was like a stranger was in front of the church. And I was going to the funeral of a stranger and I had no feeling on the inside of me because most of my life, I lived my life angry at my father. I was angry at my father because my father didn't want to have anything to do with me, I thought. So when he died, even after he got his life together, he gave his life to Christ, he became a minister. But when I was at his funeral, I felt nothing on the inside. As men, we have stopped going to church. And because of that, I believe that Christianity, it is the major cause of why Christianity is in decline in this nation. When you go to the Muslim mosque, it is full. When you see, when you look at the black Muslims, they, they come out in numbers and and, and they're so committed to their God, whether you, 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 you like what they believe or not, they, they, they will, will, will stand on the street corner and, and sell pies and, and newspaper and incense and perfume, you know, because they believe in God. Uh, brother was out there day after day over there on, on 29th and ML King. It was 100 degrees out there when he was dressed up in a suit. Burning up, but he was still selling pies and, and selling water and, and selling incense. And I, and I began to wonder, what kind of dedication is this to God that, that will cause him to be suited up out there selling bean pies and selling water and selling a newspaper? What kind of relationship does this brother have with God? When I see brothers all over the city, when I see the Muslims down at the mosque in large numbers worshiping God, but when I go to a Christian church, no matter what Christian church it is during the week and on Sunday morning. We see a church full of women, but we don't see men bowing down and worshiping God, bowing down to the God that created them. I, I began to wonder, our spiritual problems as a nation will not be fixed until the men are reconnected to God. Yes. When men start living yes. in the image of God, then we will have healthy family. Amen. We will have godly relationship. We will have godly children. We will have strong churches. We will have best community. We yes. will have godly leaders. When the men start getting reconnected to God, men, you can't make it in this world really without God. God is your creator. You were created in the image of God. God made you into his likeness. God put all the quality in you that was in him for you to be his representatives on the earth. For you to lead his people like God ordained you to. Well, some of may ask, well, well, Brother Pastor, how, how did you get there? Daryl and, and, and Anthony, you on, you on the front row. I, I see you, your brothers in the church all the time. And, and, and we need, you know, Kenny and, and a lot of your brothers. We need more brothers. Mr. Mays, uh, 95 years old, I, I see him as a pillar. You know, in, in the church, in this community, he, he just doesn't sin. He didn't send his children to church. He came to church. Amen. A godly man. We need more godly men. Amen. We need more godly men. This thing about the church, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to go to church because all them hypocrites are in the church. Amen. That's an excuse, brother. Amen. Because it's not about the hypocrites, it's about you and God. Amen. Yes, yes, it's yes. about your relationship with God. You can't let other, other folks don't keep you from doing other things you want to really do. Amen. Because you really want to do it. But when it comes to the church, amen, you let everything keep you from do, you doing what God ordained for you to do. When yes. you die, nobody else is going to be there but 
that you, amen. And when you stand before God, there's not going to be anybody else there but you. You want to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes. Give me three more of a few things, Lord, praise God. Yes. How can we become men living in the image of God? Just, just a few things before we, we let you go. We're going to spend it. Men, we must have a heart for God. We must have a heart for God. You remember in 1 Samuel 13, verse 14, uh, God began to tell King Saul that, that he was going to discontinue his, 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 his kingdom because Saul no longer had a heart for God. And God said, listen, i got to find me somebody that has a heart for God. Saul lost his heart for God. Saul stopped acting in faith. He pretended to be righteous. Saul did not pray in times of Christ. And Saul was not willing to obey God. David, though, had a heart for God because he wanted to please God. You see, you can still mess up and have a heart for God. But you know what the difference is? You're not going to stay on the ground when you mess up with God. You got a heart for God. You know why? Because you want to please God. When you got a heart for God, simply you want to please God. You know that if you do anything that is outside the will of God, you know that thing won't set with you well. Why? Because you want to please God. You want to strive to be right with God. You want to walk in faith when you have a heart for God. You say, I got a heart for God. It doesn't matter about all this other stuff out here. My heart is for God. I want to please God. I love my wife, but I want to please God even more than my wife because my wife can only do so much for me, but God is able to do everything for me. My wife want to please God even above me. Why? Because God is who created her. In the image of God. Girl, you and Anthony are, are close friends. Amen. But you ought to have a heart for God, girl. Yeah. Because even though you and Anthony are close friends, Anthony can't do nothing for you when you're in trouble. Yeah. I'm not talking about giving you a few bucks. Yeah. I'm talking about when you really are in trouble. Amen. Because yeah. you know what? Anthony can't help himself when he gets in trouble. Amen. Yeah. When sickness is in your body, you can't call on Anthony to help you out, girl. Amen. All, you can, all Anthony can do is pray for you. Amen. But there's somebody who has the power to heal that sickness in your body. But you got to have a heart for God. Amen. What gets you up every Sunday morning when you don't yes. feel like getting yes. up out of bed? When you have a rough week, it's because the heart you have for God. Yes. What keeps you living right and trying to live by the word of God? When you know, you know, you know you want to get them back. It's because you have a heart for God. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Speak in tongues to them. Hmm. But Lord, I got a heart for you. And then me and we must see our destiny in God. Because that's where our destiny is. The psalmist David said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Men, we can only reach our destiny in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You can only reach your destiny in Jesus Christ. You know what I like about what, what, what John Gray said? He said, Whatever the will of God is. He didn't ask for God to give him the victory. He, he, was, he was able, he, was, he said, whatever you will is God. Amen. I, I know that in you, that is my destiny. It might not be my destiny to be the governor of the state of Indiana. But, but he said, that's all right, God. Amen. Because whatever happens, if, if I want to be in your will. Amen. The David said, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed are men that turn away from, from proud men and followers of other gods. Blessed are men who understand that materialism and pleasure and sexual indulgence cannot satisfy the human heart. Blessed men seek the approval of God rather than men. Blessed men find fulfillment and joy by being in the presence of God. You, you can't wait to get in the presence of God. You can't wait to, to, to be in worship service because you know that when you're in the presence of God, that's where your joy comes from, is being in the presence of God. Not in all this worldly stuff that you know one day is going to pass away.
Amen. But the Lord is talking about Jesus being the source of her joy. It's the fact that every time you find yourself in the presence of God, you have joy on the inside because you are in the presence of God. Me and you ought to get excited about being in the presence of God. You ought to get excited about being in the church. You ought to get excited about being a servant of God because God made you in his image and in his likeness. You ought to be the representative of God. When women and children see that you are excited about God, when they see that you are blessed about God, I told the church the other day in Jacksonville that because my father went to church every Sunday, it said something to me. It said to me that God was important to him. And because God was important to him, then God became important to me. Because he got up and went to church and it was important. Then I felt like that that was what God was requiring of me. Blessed. And then men. We must be the spiritual leaders in our families, and in our churches, and in our community. We do good in the community. We want to hold every office that we can get. And then we want to be claimed to be the boss in our homes. Hmm. But I can't find one of y'all when it comes to working in the church. Come on now, amen. Because it wasn't ordained for it to be this way. But we wouldn't get nothing done in the church if it wasn't for the women. Come on, praise God. Praise God. Because yeah. it's the women in the church that are, that are stand up. If I ask for 50 volunteers of women to, to walk with me, I would get 50 volunteers. But when it comes to us men, we duck down in the seat. Come on now, amen. It wasn't our name to be that way, brothers. If you want to be leaders, God said you are the representatives of God. Here's what your role is as fathers and as husbands. You're supposed to love your wife. You're supposed to lead your family spiritually. You're supposed to guide them, provide for them, and protect them. One of the brothers in Jeffersonville wrote me a note because I was getting all men who have babies by other women and they don't uh, take care of the children that they have. And he wrote me a letter. He said, well, Reverend, you don't understand what, 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 what my relationship is with her. I wrote him back and said, brother, it doesn't matter what your relationship is with her. That's your baby. Amen. And you have an obligation, my God, to take care of your child. We're supposed to be leaders in the church. We're supposed to lead by example. Every committee in the church ought not to have 60% women on it because we can't find brothers. Brothers, we at least need to be half of the committee. And to be honest about it, we ought to be more of the committee because we are called to leadership in the church. <laughs> and now you're looking at me. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> because when you stand before God, He's going to replay this sermon. <laughs> when His servant said, Brothers, you need to get busy. You need to start living in the image of God. You ought to be as excited or more so about God than you are chasing women. Ouch. Or putting that money in your pocket. Amen, y'all. Amen. Because your game ain't gonna last forever. Amen. Man, some things are gonna fade away.
Instagram. <laughs> Brothers, we got to do better. Because in the end, God gave us the name. Right. Yes, he did, brothers. Yes, he did. And he said, you are my representative on the earth. Right. And we got to do it God's way. Amen. Let us pray. God, I pray for all of us men in this church. Those who are here today and those who are not. And I pray, God, that for how we are living, that we don't grieve your heart. God, we need you. We can't live in your image without you. So God, whatever is hindering us today is men. For having a heart for you. To be passionate about our relationship with you. We pray, God, that you will be moving. We love you, God, and we thank you that despite our struggles and our shortcomings and our failures, you don't abandon us and you don't throw us away. And for some of us in here, this may be our fifth chance with you, and for some it may be our tenth, for others it may be our twentieth. But the good news is, God, that you keep on giving us opportunities. So we bow down to you today, God, as the creator of the universe. And we know, God, that one day we're going to die. But God, when we do die, we want to die knowing that we have lived our life in the image of you and your likeness. And we have represented you well in the church and in our homes and in the community. And through us, God, they were able to see you and give you the glory. Now, as you were praying, men and women, if you have not Confess Jesus as Lord of your life. That's the first thing. I want you to confess it today if you have not given Jesus your life. Confess Christ today as Lord of your life. That's the first step in trying to live in the image of God. If you want to confess Christ today and you have not, I even invite you to come forward or uh, one of the ministers, if you raise your hand, will, will meet you right where you are. There may be somebody else in here. You, you already are in relationship with Christ, but, but you would like to make this your church home. I invite you also to come. And if you don't want to come, just raise your hand and the, one of the ministers will meet you right where you are. Or maybe today this message really spoke to you. And you said, Pastor, I haven't really been living in the image of God. But I want to do that. I want to invite you to come today. 